guys, it's Quinlan. Welcome back to my channel. So I am really, really, really excited about the book that I'm about to bring you, or the book, the video that I'm bringing you guys today because it has been in the works for a little while. At first, I was like not keeping it a secret, and then for a while I was doing a secret TBR, and now I'm just kind of chilling basically. But you can probably tell from the title of this video, it is about classic books. So I'm really excited. I was really interested in reading more classics and kind of expanding my taste. And I just feel like classics like teach you about the world and they're classics for a reason. So I really wanted to read some more. So I found a list, I'll insert it here on Penguin of like 100 classics to read and I want to read all of them before I die. That's the goal. So for today's video, I'm going to talk about the first five and I'm going to try to kind of a summary and then what I kind of thought and got out of the book and like a rating and just try to go all out and I'm reading them so you don't have to. That's like my little title of the video, but obviously you guys can read them if you want to. I'm not going to give spoilers in case you want to read them obviously i'm just kind of going to go into a little bit more detail and hopefully you can extract the themes that i extracted from the book i obviously may have missed something and i'll tell you guys if i would recommend it personally to read and yeah that's kind of it so the first book that i read for this challenge is pride and prejudice by jane austen so this is the first book on the list and I'm a little bit bummed because I almost think it's going to be the best. I absolutely fell in love with this story. So a quick summary is that it's basically following Elizabeth Bennet. She has four sisters. She lives in, I, I believe it takes place in like the early 1800s. And her parents are kind of part of high society, but they're not like super, super rich. But like they're obviously pretty wealthy. Like they own a big house and stuff like that. Her mom wants them all to get married and it's just kind of their journey. And it also kind of like shows Mr. Darcy introduces this character Mr. Darcy who's like kind of like a brooding rude figure in the high society who is like a friend of this guy who's just kind of moved into the neighborhood so that's exciting there's obviously a romance that blooms and I absolutely loved it I just thought it was so like funny and dramatic and just like everything you want in basically like a YA romance but it's in a classic and so it's just there's only like the benefit is that it's even written more beautifully. So basically my kind of thoughts were just basically that I had like one criticism and that it was sometimes it's hard to tell who says what because I do think that sometimes the dialogue gets a little bit confusing. But in general, I just love this story so much. I had so much fun with it. To be honest, I don't think this was the most intellectual book. And I guess when I think of a classic, I think of something that's going to really be like kind of deep and give me like a lesson in life. And I don't think this was necessarily like the deepest book, but I think it was kind of good because it just made it just it was just like entertainment and honestly a lot of times that's what you're looking for in a book you don't always want like a deep theme sometimes you just want a fun romance and this is kind of what that was although I do have to say that she may have been kind of making fun of British high society I'm not really sure because everyone there was like a little bit silly and over dramatic especially the Miss ben Mrs. Bennett like the mom of Elizabeth Bennet was very silly and so I do think there could have been a little bit of kind of like a little critique thrown in there but that's kind of most of it. I would definitely highly highly recommend this book if you're in the mood for just like something fun. I think the way personally for me I think that the way they spoke and the way it's written just adds to the beauty of the story but I can understand that for some people it may detract from the story because it's a little bit harder to decipher and it obviously doesn't like make as much sense as like kind of modern ways of think like modern ways of writing if that makes sense like there is obviously that element of yes it was written in I believe like she started it in like the late 1700s and finished it in the early 1800s or she might have just written it in the early 1800s I'm not really sure so I would say this is the kind of book for readers who don't want anything too deep or too heavy and who are willing to kind of slog through a bit of like older style writing and 
also like the spelling is a little bit different and the book is not like the fastest pace like I do think in YA they try to keep your attention by having like a fast pace but I think this is like a classic especially if you love romance I think this is just like a classic you have to read. The next book on the list is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee and I read this kind of a long time ago in eighth grade so I'll try to give you kind of what I remember but basically it is about a lawyer named Atticus Finch and he is defending a black man who is accused of raping a white girl and basically everyone in the town is obviously kind of crusading against this black man and it's told from the perspective of Atticus Finch's daughter. His daughter doesn't necessarily understand the complexities or the nuances of like what's going on but I think she is a great narrator and kind of showing you and I do think this is kind of an important book to read if you haven't read it. I think a lot of people read it in school which is good but it is I believe banned in some schools I'm not really sure and so especially in this climate I think it's a good book to read because it obviously has like a big theme in like racism and then there's also this character Boo Radley who's kind of like ostracized from society and he also kind of represents like an outsider and like kind of showing you like who humanity as humanity is at its core and in general I just think this is a really powerful book I would definitely recommend it I feel like it's just an important book to read and to like know about I think obviously it's classic all these books are classic for a reason but I think this one is especially poignant especially with the relevance in today's society and so I just generally believe that you should pick it up and yeah, I think this one is obviously a lot heavier than like let's say Pride and Prejudice and I would hesitate to give it kind of like a star rating because I remember not like loving the way it was told and I remember thinking it was kind of slow but also I was in 8th grade and I do remember the message being the important part and I think that's kind of what matters and yeah. The next book on the list is The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald and you guys probably know what it's about but just in case you don't and you haven't read it in school which is where I read it again I read it in 10th grade it is about basically this guy Nick Haraway and it details kind of it's told from his perspective but it basically details the story of Jay Gatsby who's this really wealthy kind of new money type of person and his one true love Daisy Buchanan who's actually married and I don't want to give you too many spoilers, but it's basically about the American dream and all of that great stuff. I think the important takeaways from this book are is kind of that the American dream is not achievable for everyone and that like living in the past won't get you anywhere and you know like money isn't everything I kind of feel like are the main kind of like themes of this story again it's been a while but I did find I actually really enjoyed The Great Gatsby I thought it was a lot of fun to read so I would recommend this one again if you're interested in kind of like an American dream kind of story it's just a fun because it takes place in the 1920s so you have this like fun culture of like roaring 20s and like parties and all of that great stuff. I do think like the movie is also like a fun way to kind of digest the same kind of message. Although I do, I'm a fan of books more than movies a lot of times, but the movie is a lot of fun, especially with like the grandeur of like the party. You can really kind of visualize how wealthy Gatsby is basically and all that stuff. I Again, it's been a while since I read the book, but I had a lot of fun with it and I would recommend it. I think not as fun as like Pride and Prejudice because Pride and Prejudice is just elite. But Great Gatsby is definitely like a fun read and well, is it fun? It's a little bit depressing sometimes, but I think the party aspect is like the fun part. Yeah and the rest of it is maybe a little bit depressing but I did like I mean I was kind of neutral on our narrator I don't remember having like an opinion on him so the next book that I read was 100 years of solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez and so here he is on the back 
and this book I had never heard of even though it's super famous and it's basically about like a small town in Colombia and it's about kind of the foundation of the town by like Har Jose Arquelio. Let me check on his name because Jose, Jose Arquelio Buendia and then it kind of details like basically like a hundred years so it goes into like the family and it goes to one, two, three, four, five generations of the family, which is kind of exciting. So you get to see the town kind of grow and the family kind of grow. This book I honestly struggled a lot with. It is, again, famous for a reason, but I think I kind of missed the point when I read this book. I did have to Google the themes. Once I Googled the themes, it made a lot more sense to me, but it still didn't make me, like, enjoy the book as much. It was kind of a whimsical. So, oh, an important book note about this book is it is magical realism, and this is the man who invented magical realism. Kind of crazy. When you're reading classics, you get kind of shook because it's like people just invented new genres. Like, you could just do that. Like, crazy. But, basically, so it is the start of, like, magical realism. So there are some magical elements, but they're blended into the story to make them seem very natural. And there's not, like, a ton of them. There's just, like, a couple moments and, like stuff like that where there is like some magic but the magic doesn't necessarily play like a huge role in the story it's not like the people are like magicians it's just like there are like flying carpets and this lady ascends to heaven and stuff like that so there's like in the middle of the story like in the middle of the street she just goes whoo up to heaven you know casual casual day so to be honest it's not that long but I did feel like I struggled kind of getting through it it did take me a long time to read it I thought some of it was kind of whimsical and fun and in the beginning I enjoyed it and in general like I enjoyed the book itself but I just didn't like love it and I couldn't fall in love with it so the themes that I did google is it is a criticism on the Latin American elite which I thought it did kind of do a good job except for the fact that I didn't realize it was a criticism on the Latin American elite because there is a lot of like incest and there is this kind of idea of like people who think they're better than each other and like so classism basically and a lot of those elements and so definitely once I learned about that, I could definitely see kind of where that was coming from, but while I was reading it, I didn't really get it. And part of it could be, again, this is a translation from Spanish, so obviously I read it in English, so some of it could have been lost in translation, I have no idea. But I think this is kind of a not a fun book but like an important book to read just because like you want to broaden your like cultural horizons and I do feel like again like a lot of classics that people recommend or that are super super famous tend to be like British authors or American authors or like Russian authors so very like Eurocentric and there are obviously some non-European slash American authors that are like really famous like The Art of War for example is a super famous book but I think I can name like probably like 10 like European classics and I could may maybe you know like I probably couldn't even count on this hand like non-European classics you know what I mean and so I do think it's important to kind of broaden your horizons but personally I didn't love this book so I don't know if I would start with this book he does have other books that maybe you guys could try and let me know if you think they're any good but it's definitely interesting like an interesting writing style and I do think some of it's just kind of like ridiculous and funny it is like definitely like an adult book there's like a lot of kind of like sexual overtones I have to say which is kind of funny but yeah that's kind of how I feel about this book I don't know if I would necessarily recommend it but I wouldn't say you shouldn't read this book you know what I mean and I do feel like that's gonna happen with a lot of classics but of course I'll let you know if I just don't think a book is worth it like I don't know Moby Dick is it really worth it but I have to read it because it's on the list in terms of a hundred years of solitude I think if you wanted to read the list like me maybe save it towards the end because I think there are better classics that you can find 
Although, on the other hand, it could have just been me who kind of missed it because I know my mom really enjoyed this book and there is kind of a nice element of like the women in this book live a really long time and so it is kind of focusing a little bit on the women and the women's stories and the men while they're important characters in the story like the women are just such strong pillars and they're so necessary and integral to the story that I do think that it is kind of... It's kind of nice to see. Then finally, the fifth book that I read on the list was In Cold Blood by Truman Capote, who's an American author. And this is super interesting because this is basically the invention of like true crime. And it follows the murders of the five clutters. And it basically details kind of like leading up to the murder and then after the murder while well, the suspects are like kind of on the run and like while they're discovering who done it and basically but you know you know who does it the entire time because you follow kind of the perpetrators of the murders from the beginning of the book but you follow also the detective as they kind of follow them and then kind of the conclusion of the story is like basically their punishment and I don't want to give like spoilers, although if you Google the Clutter family, you'll obviously find out what happens and like who killed them and what happens to the killers. But I did this th think this was like a really interesting book. If you like kind of like BuzzFeed Unsolved and that type of thing, I feel like you might like this book because it's definitely, it's like kind of watching like a fun, like not a fun documentary because it's a murder. And it did make me scared. I'm not gonna lie, reading this at night, I was a little scared because I was kind of like, someone's gonna come murder me in my sleep. And it's just, I think the crazy thing about this is that it's all real and he put in a lot of research to really like develop this book and make sure it was accurate. So I'm assuming at least all or most of the stuff in this book are true and they come from documents. He includes like letters and I believe the confessions did a lot of interviews so there are a lot of truthful information like this isn't a fuck it's not it's not a fictionalized version of the murders it's like he did a lot of research to make sure it was real it's very accurate is basically what I'm trying to say that took me forever so I apologize I had fun with this book I would read it again I mean I'm not gonna probably read it again anytime soon just because I obviously know what happens but it is very engaging and it is easy to fall into the style it's very readable it doesn't seem like it was written too long ago and it wasn't written too long ago I think it was written in like the 60s or something like the late 60s it was published or something like that I want to say but I'm not exactly sure but it just it reads kind of like a documentary and then there's like some dialogue it's just very interesting if you're not into like murders and like true crime and stuff like that i wouldn't read it and it's not anything like a murder mystery because you know who killed the clutters from the beginning of the book so that kind of brings me to the end of this video just to like summarize i think that pride and prejudice was just kind of like a fun book i would really recommend it to all of you guys because especially if you're into romance i think that's definitely something you should go for to kill a mockingbird i honestly think everybody should read it just because of how poignant it is great gatsby i don't think you have to read it i think we all kind of understand like the american dream is not always achievable and it's not always realistic for everyone you can work really hard and still not achieve the american dream i think and you can have a lot of money and not be happy and i think a lot of these themes are just like things that we kind of know but i do think it's like a fun book and it's definitely kind of like the og like american dream book then for 100 years of solitude again if you're looking to kind of expand your repertoire in terms of like reading books from different cultures because i do believe Marquez is from Colombia I want to say but he did leave, live in Mexico at certain points I believe that does like kind of expand like your horizons in terms of books I do think it's good and it is like a criticism so it does it is kind of like deeper and more intellectual even though on the surface it doesn't really seem that deep and it doesn't really seem that intellectual it just seems kind of like a story about like a family and honestly there are some crazy things that happen in that book and I kind of want everyone to read it just to like Li like listen to all the crazy things and also there's a lot of incest so kind of yikes and then for in cold blood 
I don't think there's like themes to really take away from the book. I think it's just basically like a true crime book and I wouldn't say it's like important for anyone to read but if you're into that kind of thing I would recommend it. So those are kind of my overall thoughts on everything and thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you later.